Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, I wanna give some tips and advice for taking the Excel 2019 exam. The first thing that I wanna do is encourage you to take a deep breath. Yes, this exam might be a little bit difficult, and yes, you're probably going to see things like functions on the exam. In fact, I'll tell you, you're going to see things like functions on the exam. But if you've put the time and the effort into preparing for this exam like you should, then you have nothing to worry about. Take a deep breath. The worst thing that you could do is get inside your head and cause yourself to doubt while you're taking that exam or just to question what you're doing. And that's gonna make that exam much more difficult than it has to be. So take a deep breath, clear your mind, everything's going to be okay. The next thing that I wanna encourage you to do is to take a peek at the Excel 2019 exam page. That lists all of the skills that you could be asked to carry out on the exam. So the most important thing to me and to many others was the functions that you could be asked to complete on the exam. There's a whole section outlining which functions you could be asked to carry out. And if you take a peek at that and you understand the functions, when you see questions that you're asked to carry out that deal with functions, you're not going to really second guess yourself. You're going to say, oh, that's this function and quickly and easily be able to carry that task out. So visit that page. I'll link that in the description below so that you can just quickly click on that and access it and it'll help you as you prepare for the exam. The next thing that I want to talk about is the actual exam format. Now it's a little bit different than in times past. You're going to have 50 minutes to complete the exam. That's the norm. But in the past with the 2016 exam, you had seven projects to complete. That's not the case on this exam. Certiboard lists that you could have anywhere from five to eight projects. And within those projects, you could have anywhere from one to six tasks to complete. I literally on a different exam had just one question to complete and it kind of threw me off. So just be mindful of that. I think the sweet spot for these exams is to carry out 35 different tasks between the projects that you're given to complete. So keep that in the back of your mind. As you're working through the exam, I want to encourage you, if you're not immediately sure how to carry out a task, that you mark it for review. That's going to be important because you don't want to spend too much time on one question. Just move on to the next question. Once you've completed all of the projects, if there's still time on the exam, you'll have the ability to go back and look at the tasks that you marked for review. So again, mark it for review if you're not sure. Don't waste your time on any one project. Pace yourself. From my experience, that first project is often the most difficult to carry out, whether it's the visual presentation of the, the project or it's the actual task questions. are just They just seem to be a little bit more difficult, but that's from my experience. So be prepared for that. That first task, they might try and throw you off guard it might fluster you a little bit, but just mark it for review and move on. And then at the end, once you've gotten your momentum, you can go back and you'll probably figure out a lot of those questions very quickly and easily. I want to encourage you to make sure that you understand the program features. We've talked about formulas and functions for this, and I want you to not only know what functions you could be asked, but you should understand like a definition of what that function does. So that way you can read a task question. If it's not very clear, you can say, oh, that sounds like this function and just quickly go to it instead of like really racking your brain. And it's not just functions that that should be the case. Things like conditional formatting or uh, building a table and the different features within a table. Those aren't necessarily test questions. I'm just, you should understand those features so that when you're reading the task questions, you're not really having to think all that hard about what you're being asked to do. I want to caution you. This exam seemed to be just a little bit harder. There weren't as many give you questions. I will warn you that I felt like this exam just seemed to be a little bit more difficult in the tasks that they were asking you to carry out. I didn't think it was hard. I just thought the questions and the tasks seemed to be a little bit more difficult. The give me questions that I felt like were on the 16 and 13 exam, I didn't really see a lot of those. And so this wasn't a task question or anything. But if I asked you to change the picture size to four inches, you could quickly do that by selecting the picture and changing the size, but don't expect a lot of questions like that. There just weren't as many as you would have thought. All right, let's go ahead and jump into Excel. In the introduction to this video, I mentioned the Microsoft Excel 2019 exam page. There's actually two of them. Certiport has created one and Microsoft has created one. It's the same information, but presented in different ways. Right here, we're on the Certiport website, and the link to this page is in the description. Down below, we have the Excel 2019 
exam objectives and we can just click on download exam objectives. And then once it downloads, you can just click on it. I prefer this version of the, the mains over the Microsoft one. This document just talks a little bit about the exam. It shows you the five domains that you are going to be tested on. And each domain has subdomains and underneath those subdomains, different points that you're expected to carry out. For this exam, one area that you're going to want to focus on is to perform operations by using formulas and functions. In this section, it lists all of the functions that you could be asked to carry out. Some new functions that were added for this exam are the count A, the count blank, the lin function, concat, replace concatenate, and the text join function. If we go to the Microsoft page, it's a little bit different. The nice thing about this web page is it tells you how each domain is broken down as far as the test. One thing that I noticed is that the percentages of these domains have changed. They put more of an emphasis on formulas and functions that went up for this exam. So you're definitely going to want to know how the domains weigh for this exam. And if I click the download exam skills outline, this information contains all of the same information as the Certiport version. I'll go ahead and provide a link to this page as well in the description. As we begin to look into Excel, some things to note are some features that were added to the 2019 exam, as well as some of the domains that changed for the 19 version. The first thing that you should be aware of is that Excel now allows you to insert 3D objects. If we go to the Insert tab, it can be found in the Illustrations group, and it's very similar to inserting a picture. But we're going to click the 3D Models drop down, and we're going to select From a File. For the exam, you want to feel comfortable navigating through the different document folders. It could put a file like this in your documents or pictures or maybe the 3D objects. Regardless of where it's at, you should feel comfortable navigating through this left side and opening and closing the different folders to find your file. It'll be specific as to where you can find that on the exam. Let's go ahead and select our camera image and I'm going to click insert. And we can see that that 3D object was brought in. With it selected, I have my 3D model tools format tab at the top. Some things to note in this section is we have the different views. If I wanted to display the right view, all I would have to do is find and click on to show that perspective. Of course, we have alt text. And we have some sizing over here on the far right of the ribbon. We'll go ahead and delete this. Something else to note for this exam is that bringing in a text document or a CSV file while being able to do that is not new. The screens have changed and you want to familiarize yourself with bringing in this data so that you can carry out a task like that. So we'll go to the data tab. We're in the get and transform data group and we're going to click from text CSV. We'll go ahead and select our text file. For this screen, we have our delimiter we can change at the top down below. You have load, but you also have load two, and those two options will get different results. You also have this edit button, we'll click it. Which brings up this Power Query Editor. There's really a lot of different features that you can do to your data, and you wanna feel comfortable going through the ribbon and the different features that you can apply to your data. When you're done, you have the option of close and load or you can click close and load to. For this, we'll click close and load to. And that window will allow me to put it in a specific spot. For this, we'll just go ahead and put it in A11. These different windows will do different things, and so you want to practice this. We'll click OK. And we can close out of this. On this exam, you're going to see formulas, and that's an area where the domain has increased. So formulas and functions are going to have more weight on this exam. But some of the formulas that you could be asked to perform are different from the 16 version, such as the count blank, the count A, those were both added. The lin function was added. Concat, replace concatenate. It's an important thing to note. And then the text join function was also added. I want to encourage you to know the functions that they could ask you to perform and almost have like a running list in the back of your head. And I want to encourage you to know what each of those functions do. Because on the exam, it's not going to say carry out the lin function. It's going to give you some details and you're going to have to know, hey, I got to use this function to carry out this task. With that said, I'm going to put my cursor in C5 and I'm going to use the concat function and I'm just going to quickly go through it. 
But what I want to encourage you to do is to use the insert function button for this exam. If I type in concat, this window tells me that the concat function concatenates a list or range of text strings. If you're not sure on the exam, this little bit of help might help you, but it gives you even more help. We'll click OK. For this, we're just going to combine the first and last name. So my text one will be A5. I'm going to hit tab and then I'm going to hit space. But watch what happens when I hit tab on text line two. Notice that the function builder putting quotation marks around that text. That's a benefit of using this. Had I been manually hand keying this formula and I missed those quotation marks, I'm going to come back with an error message and I'm going to struggle on this exam. In addition to things like quotation marks, it's telling me what text line three is for. And for the different functions like if, this could be very beneficial to you if you're struggling. For text line three, we're just going to select B5 and click OK. And notice it went ahead and put those two cells together. My final point on formulas and functions is you should feel comfortable playing around in the formula bar, whether it's hanking in formulas, modifying of formulas already in there. Maybe you need to make a relative reference absolute or even make what's in there a mixed reference. All of those are things that you're going to want to feel comfortable doing on this exam. I want to encourage you as you're going through this exam to read carefully and to read the questions slowly. It's easy to miss a step because you overlooked a part. Maybe there's two or three parts to a task question. You don't want to be marked wrong because you missed something. In addition to missing something, the wording of the task questions can be tricky and you might not immediately know what you need to do to carry out the task. Reading carefully will help with that. Being slow reading through it will help with that. Sometimes you're going to have to break up a task question because you can't carry out part B of the task before you do part C. So you need to be able to break up the task, know what you need to do first, and then make sure you carry out all the parts of the task. If you're asked to carry out an if function, don't expect the criteria that you're having Excel to look for be first and then your true next and then your false third. It's just not going to break out like that. Again, make sure to read carefully so that you don't miss anything. On the exam, watch for a quick switch. Maybe you're on the perform operations tab and you've carried out a task. The very next task question looks like it would go with the perform operations. If you're not thinking clearly, if you're not reading carefully, you might not see that step that says go to sheet one to do whatever the task question is. Same thing with things like charts or tables. On different exams that I've taken, I've seen that quick switch where it has you do one thing to a chart, maybe that's over on the right hand side. And then the very next task question has you perform something on another chart, but the charts down below, you just have to scroll down to see it. On questions like that, the task question will give details of the different charts. So you'll be able to identify what you're looking at. When you're working on the exam, one of the things that they do in the very beginning of the project is give you a project overview. Now this view is changed for the 2019 test. Before, the project overview had its own tab and you would have to click on task one to see the project task question. That's not the case for this exam. The project overview is actually going to be listed above task one and you might actually have to scroll through task one to see all of what you need. So keep that in the back of your mind. While you shouldn't spend a whole lot of time looking at the project overview, it is important that you be able to look at your project screen and identify what's going on, it's going to help you carry out the task questions. For example, on this worksheet tab, I know I have two different sets of data going on, but in my top section, I have some accounting information. And if the task question said to determine which employees worked a minimum of 30 hours, you should be able to look at the chart and pick up what column you would need on the exam, you're going to have to be able to look at the data, identify the information that you need from this table, and which function you would need to use to perform whatever task it had you to do. It is important for you to be able to identify what you're looking at on the screen. It will help you carry out the task. For this exam, I don't feel like there were as many give me questions as there have been in the past. When I say give me, I mean those easy questions like, insert a picture and then apply this color to it. Now you're going to see questions like that, but I just felt like there weren't as many on this exam or some of the other exams I've taken. I also felt like some of the questions were a little bit more difficult. Not that they weren't tasks that you couldn't complete in the 50 minutes, 
but I just felt like they were a little bit more challenging and that I had to think a little bit more for this exam. On this exam, you don't want to be afraid to dig. Most likely, you're going to be asked some obscure questions, things you wouldn't normally carry out in Excel. If I'm on the home tab and I wanted to play around with the text on A1, I have the font settings here, but maybe I need to open up the font dialog launcher box. And in here, I have a lot of font settings. Maybe I need to add a border. We have some alignment stuff. Of course, we can fill. I'm telling you that because this second window gives me extra features. And there are a lot of these dialogue launcher boxes that you can find throughout the different ribbons. And the only way to carry out some of these tasks is if you dig in these settings. My last little bit of advice for you is that you should be familiar with the features of things like tables, objects, charts, and smart art. If I quickly make this a table. With my cursor in the table, I get the table tools design tab. And I have so many different features in this section, like removing duplicates, you can convert to a range. We have some table style options here. Maybe we wanted to add a totals row, we could do that. Of course, we have our table styles over here if we didn't like what we had chose. And the same is going to be for those other things, objects, charts, and smart art. As you begin to prepare for this exam, I want to again encourage you to visit that exam page. I want to encourage you to make sure you know your functions and what you could be asked to carry out. I want to encourage you to put your practice in. And then the last thing I want to encourage you to do is to just take a deep breath and walk into that exam with a calm mind. That way you have every ability to do well on this exam.